Hi guys, welcome back. So today we are going to talk about uh, the uh, chromosome. So let me share the screen. Share screen. Share. All right. So, so that's um that's what we are going to talk about today, the chromosome variation. Um. So, what are the chromosome variations? So we learned that uh, uh, we can use karyotype to look at the chromosome structure at the metaphase. That will be the quiz question. In which cell cycle, which stage of the cell cycle, we uh, get a very compact chromosome structure that will be in the metaphase. And when we use that, we can see how many how many chromosomes, right? The number and also the shape. We kind of go over the normal like a like p p arm and the q arm and uh, different type of the different shape of the chromosome. So we get that idea. But now we are going to see what are those variations. So this will be more like a leaving from the normal range into some abnormal situation, chromosome variation. So with this one, we will talk about three types of the chromosome variation. One is the uh, uh, proidy, like uh, N, uh, and you and you proidy or polyploidy. We get this some idea about the polyploidy, right? We know that the somatic cells has the two n uh, number of the chromosome. N is twenty three, so two n is a uh, forty six chromosome. So that's we call them the diploid or diploidy. D i refer to two, so two n. And then we have the, uh, in the gametes, we have uh, 23 chromosomes that we call them the, um, the haploid, 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 right here, chromosome uh, cells. So get the idea, but now we're going to kind of expand from there. Any proidy in that cell, we would have either one more chromosome or one less chromosome. So normal will be 46 chromosome. Right here. Normal will be 46 chromosome. And uh, in the annual priority, we, we will see people with only 45 chromosome or 47 chromosome, things like that. We also have a ploy. Uh, Oh, sorry, polyploidy. So that in that situation, it's not just one or one more, or one less chromosome. It will be the entire set of chromosome. For example, that we have two n, there will be three n, four n number of the chromosome. So that's that. So that's kind of like a range of the variation. So you get the idea that chromosome variation, including the number difference, and also the shape difference. So this is called the chromos chromosomal aberration. There are several shape difference or shape variation. We may have some deletion, say this is a chromosome, a part is, uh, is deleted. We have duplication, a part is duplicate to several much more, many more copies, very much like a repeat, uh, we, we learn we learned in our previous lecture, inversion uh, and also translocation. So with this chromosome, chromosome very uh, aberration, we will focus on the translocation because this is most common and the most clinical relevant. So you guys ready? All right, let's move on to it. So it should be easy. The number are different, the shape are different. So you got it, all right? So just, term, just some terminology, you need to be familiar with those terminology. So probability is a, is a, is a, is a way to, to characterize the number of the chromosome. One second. OK, 
Okay, so for example, there would be uh, the uh, diploid or here we call it monoploidy or in our human cells, we call the, uh, the, uh, the gamete have uh, N, right? As a 23 chromosome, not 2N, 2N is in the somatic cell. We call it diploid. In, we call this haploid, but we can also call that mono that only has one set of the chromosome. But in the somatic cell, it has two N, one from mom, one from dad. Or it could be the polyploidy. All these are under the category called euploidy, meaning that you got all the gene you need, not more, not less. So even though you duplicate it or replicate it, you still have proportionally the same amount of gene from each chromosome. So, so for example, human has a uh, two REO, one from a set of the chromosome from mom, the other one from dad. And uh, in the sex cell, everything just can help. So we still have all the gene we need, no more, no less. So that's the euploid. Another one is called the annuloidy, meaning that it can have one more extra. So it will be selectively only happens to one chromosome. For example, chromosome number 21. That's a most common annuloidy in human. And with that, we have one more number 21 chromosome. So in the normal people, we have two chromosome 21, but with this annual priority, we have one more. So that will fit into this one, hyper fit into the one, we call that two and plus one. So the person will have 46 plus one, 47 chromosome. So we call this a trisomy. Uh, we hardly see more than that. Uh, so that's the uh, most common one. If there is one more extra, it will be 2n plus 2, or it could be less. Uh, for example, this would happen to person who can have a uh, female. So female usually has a sex chromosome XX, but uh, in some female, they only got one X. So they have uh, 45 chromosome with one X missing. So that is the uh, monosomy to N minus one. So that's that. So, so annuloidy is the uh, variation from the normal that patient has person, not necessary patient. This person may show symptom, may not show symptom. We can call it patient maybe. Uh, patient means it's, they have a disease away from the normal, cannot be corrected by the homeostasis. All right, so in the annual priority, the person will have either 45 or 47 chromosome in human. Okay, so they will be either missing or one extra chromosome. And the number of chromosome usually happens in either the, in the autosome, like uh, the uh, number one to number 22 chromosome. Usually this happens in number 22, 21. And so if the person has one more chromosome in number 21, the person would develop the Down syndrome. We also call it, uh, uh, trisomy 21 uh, Down syndrome. So it, it does, you know, the person usually, we or, you know, normal human would have 221, right? So you have the gene from these two chromosomes. But if you have one more chromosome, then you will produce the protein produced from the chromosome 21, you will have much more gene or much more protein transcribed from that chromosome. So another disease is uh, XXY, uh, the person, so it has XY, so this is a male, 
with the Y is make it a, a male, but it has not just one X, it's two X. So this person will also have 47 chromosome. And because of that extra X, this male will have uh, reduced testosterone and uh, yeah. So in this condition, we call it a uh, uh, creamy filter. Creamy filter syndrome. As for the one chromosome less, missing one chromosome, it will be the situation most commonly seen is in the Turner syndrome, that the person, the female, would usually female has two X, but this female has only one X. Do you need two X? One X is enough, you know, to develop to produce a protein that you need, but there is some deficit coming from a lack of X. So we would, that's uh, just some example of this uh, aneuploidy. So basically you will have three quiz questions right here. Down syndrome, which chromosome is an extra chromosome or which exon is uh, missing chromosome, Turner syndrome, Greeny filter syndrome, so trisomy 21, trisomy 21 is the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, a typical uh, aneuploidy that the person has one extra chromosome. That extra chromosome is in the chromosome 21. And you may remember that this is uh, one of the, uh, across uh, centric chromosome that the P way, P, sorry, P arm is much shorter than the uh, Q arm. So that's one extra. So when we do this, what's this uh, technique? Uh, Karyotype, right? And uh, uh, so we can count the chromosome number. And we found that usually people has 23 chromosome, 23 pair. This one has uh, one more sex chromosome, 23 pair. So 47 chromosome in this person. Okay, so this is uh, the consequence or the, uh, the clinical symptom. These, you know, when the, when the, when the uh, cells or uh, gametes or the sperm, gametes has a uh, one or missing one or one extra chromosome, they may not really develop into a survival infant, uh, but with the chromosome 21, those survive, or if it happens to the sex chromosome, they survive. Some of those one or missing chromosome, the uh, embryo basically would not fully develop. So that would be a, a either miscarriage or a, a infertility. So this is a genetic disease. It can be examined by uh, doing a test on the pregnant woman and uh, to identify it. And if the uh, if this can this embryo can fully successfully develop into a baby, yeah. So that's that. It has some physical and the mental uh, uh, develop uh, a slow development or disability from uh, trisomy twenty one. Another uh, trisomy or the uh, aneuploidy is the uh, clean filter syndrome that the person has one more chromosome at the uh, sex chromosome. So it has no more a range of this autosome, autosome the uh, somatic, uh, 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 sorry, the chromosome, not the sex chromosome, but in sex chromosome, it is one more. So because of the Y, this is a male, but because of one extra X, it's, it affects its uh, sex development. 
So boys born with an extra X will present as the clinic filter syndrome. You know that with this extra X, they may not fully express. So those extra X or, you know, the extra 21, but they may not fully express. And so the symptom may be vary across the population the, of, of with this, uh, with this uh, 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 chromosome variation. So, but uh, generally speaking, the male with this uh, extra X will have low testosterone and uh, may have difficult, may have a problem with uh, um, reproductive system and the sex characteristics, male sex characteristics. All right, so that is the uh, trisomy that we have three sets of either 21 or three sets of the sex chromosome. As for the monosomy that we have one less chromosome, uh, the common one would be the, uh, we call it XO or X0 uh, because it's the female should have XX. If it's male, it will be XY, but there's no Y. So this, the, the person is, is, can never be developed into the male. The person will basically develop into a female. So this will be the female. And uh, uh, we call this a uh, Turner syndrome. So meaning that a syndrome means that it has a spectrum of this, this uh, different symptom. It may not fully shown in each individual. Some, pe some person may have stronger symptoms, some person may have not so many symptoms. So with this one, still a female, but it will be a little bit shorter and uh, um, some short heights, right? And uh, some uh, cardiovascular disease or defects and heart defects and uh, uh, ovary development fa failure. It's not always, always, but uh, some will develop symptoms like that or defects like that. Why do patients develop the, uh, the annual poiety, right? You may ask, why does it happen? This is going to be related to the process that goes wrong in the my, meiosis, meiosis, yeah, my, meiosis. Yes. So during the meiosis, right, that the meiosis is a cell division to produce the gametes. And so in a stem cell, like a, a stem cell to develop the oocytes, this will be before the birth of the a baby, a baby girl, or the stem cell to produce sperm. This can help happens in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, adult uh, male. So these stem cells, they divide, they divide, they produce the gametes. Usually that is so say, so say the, we say we have two sets, right? And uh, here we have sister chromatids, for example, like this one here, sister chromatids. So the first, first division, we have a uh, meiosis has two stage of the division. The first division is the separation of the homologous chromosome. So they say this is from the, the chromosome from mom, this chromosome from dad. We see two because it's sister chromatid. That's after the DNA replication. And the, these sister chromatids connect with the central mirror. So we would basically, these four will be developed, divided, will be divided into each one of these four cells. The first division is division between homologous chromosome. So the mom, the dad, right? And then sister chromatids will be, deep, will be separate at the second stage of the meiosis. And then, so that's normal. That would be typical uh, uh, haploid uh, cell. Okay, but things can go wrong. For example, this one here, uh, the the uh, the stem cells has the replication of the chromosome during the first division. 
homologous are separate, so, so far so good. But in the second division, the cis chromatids are supposed to be pulled apart. These ones pull apart well, but this one, it doesn't really pull apart that well. So when cell form division, these chromosomes are split into one of the uh, gametes and the other one leave it with none. So in this one, you have one extra chromosome. So if these met with a normal uh, sperm or eggs, there will be one more extra in, in that uh, zygote. But uh, as for this one, when this one met with one of these, it will become one less, right? Because normal sperm and the normal eggs, when they meet with each other, we form from the haploid to the diploid. We, 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 we form from the cell with 23 chromosome or N to 2N. So this, this, this is N, it will be 2N. But with these two, it will be 2N plus one. If it is two, it will be two and minus one. So uh, it also could be that uh, the problem happens in the first stage. So say these two are supposed to be separated, but um, it's not separated successfully. Then all these chromosomes are sp split into one cell with this one noun. None of these chromosomes, say this chromosome 21, for example, then here we have 421, 0, 021, and here we have 221, 0, 021. So with this one, 221 plus 121, the uh, the uh, the zygote uh, to to have this um, uh, to produce the embryo, it will have 321. That will be the trisomy 21 that would develop to the Down syndrome. With this one, he has less 21, so it will be monosomy uh, 21. Uh, usually in that situation, the, the, the embryo will not develop. The, it's a uh, lethal, the embryo basically will die in the, in the, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the infant development. So, so this error is called non disjunction. So basically, we call this separation a disjunction, right? Because they are junction. These are junction. So normal disjunction, not connected disjunction. And then if they are not divided as it's supposed to be, we call it non disjunction. So, so this non disjunction can happen in the second, usually happen in the second um, uh, meiosis, or it could happen in the first meiosis. So that is the common cause to, to produce the cell with uh, aneuploidy. So it could be see the quiz question that uh, what is the uh, uh, cell process leading to the development or the produce production of the aneuploidy cells. It will be non disjunction process, something like that. All right, so that is the aneuploidy. Uh, some other thing we need to also learn about is the uh, Down syndrome. So this uh, trisomy 21 is Down syndrome. This is the consequence of the non-disjunction mitosis process, meiosis process, yeah. And this meiosis process, it, it happens, you know, for the, uh, For the um, uh, for the uh, gametes are happen all the time, and we learned that we learned that um, the 
chance or the frequency to have baby with trisomy uh, increase with the age of the mother. So, so that or you can see that the chance to develop more is greatly high. And, uh, and so they will be uh, recommended that um, when the mother is in an older age during their pregnancy, it will be recommended to have a fetus chromosome test. Basically, we will get some samples from the mother and to see whether when we can simply do some karyotype to see to count the number of the chromosome. So there are, uh, let me see that. Yeah, so there are uh, two major ways to do that fetus test. So let's look at these two methods uh, to do the fetus, uh, fetus uh, chromosome test. One is the uh, to test the am amniotic uh, fluid, and the other one is to collect some sample from the uh, chorionic vitae or vetus, right? So that's these two. So one is the uh, to sample from the amniotic fluid. So something like this one here. The uh, pregnant woman will under will be uh, uh, laying down under the uh, ultrasound, and uh, uh, a needle stick into the uh, amniotic fluid, and I get some sample from this fluid. We will get some shaded cells from the uh, embryonic uh, em embryonic uh, baby uh, fetus, and then we can use that. We will get those cells. The number of cells we may be small but we may culture it to produce more of these cells and then we can do the karyotype to count the chromosome and we could do some more tests right some more genetic test another one is the uh the uh chorionic video sample so where is that why is it so basically is the placenta so here is the placenta in here we have the interaction between the mother and the baby. So we basically will sample some baby's cell. This is not affecting the baby growth. So this is safe, right? It's not going to affect the baby. And, uh, uh, but it's the sample from the baby cells, derived from the baby cell or pretty, uh, yes, divided from the baby cells. And so we can use it as a sample. We can do it, uh, uh, Trans cervical to get a sample, or we can go through the trans abdominal to get the samples. So that's two methods. The most common one would be the uh, the amniotic synthesis. Amniotic synthesis that is sample from the amniotic fluid. So this is the common one. Usually, this one is performed at about 15 to 20 weeks gestation and uh, using the ultrasound to guide the needle. So it's getting the symbol from the fluid and away from the baby. Uh, once we collect the fluid, the amount of sample may be small. So we will culture a cell to get about 20 cells so we can do some karyotype. And then we can do the chromosome. Nowadays, we can also do some gene test. In the, in the old time, there will be risk come with this process, causing a miscarriage. So the risk in 2007, so before 2007, in 2007, the risk reduced to about one in 1600, but before is about one in uh, 350. So, um, so because you have that comparison, right? 
that whether whether uh, it's safe to do it, of course there's risk. So it must uh, the benefit must must uh, uh, better than the risk. And so that is uh, that's why that uh, you can see that if in all time the risk is about one in three fifty three hundred fifty miscarriage. So let's take a look at this chart again. So one in three uh, three hundred fifty. So somewhere like that. So with this one, uh, the chance to develop to have the baby with uh, uh, Down syndrome is about that range, right? So you can either miscarriage or you have the, um, the Down syndrome's baby basically that is higher than that, the chance to have the Down syndrome baby is higher. So it's highly recommend that women uh, uh, about 37 years old, uh, pregnant woman older than 37 years old would be recommended to do this test. So that's that. Now another one is called the polyploidy. That is one extra set of the chromosome. Uh, we usually don't see this in human. We usually see these polyploidy in plants, but not in human because this is, in a way, it's a lethal. So, but that is out there. It could be there, but usually not in, not concern us in human. So that is a different uh, way to see the different, uh, to see the chromosome variation. So here is the example of three sets of the chromosome, not just two N, it's three N. So you can see every chromosome has three sets of it. So just a very short summary until now uh, so far that we learned about the proidy, we learned about the polyproids. Uh, it's usually not happen in human uh, uh, embryonic uh, uh, or the uh, human cells. There are some cells that actually has polyploidy, but overall this is this is not common in human cells. And uh, also we learned about the annu annuploidy annuploids. That is that whether that's one more or one less chromosome. If there's one more chromosome, it's called the Trisomies, uh, we commonly see it in trisomy 21, or it could be the uh, uh, the uh, sex chromosome uh, annuloid, like uh, we have uh, X0, that's a Turner syndrome, or XXY that we talk about the uh, Cliff Green Fur syndrome. That's that. And uh, for trisomy 21, that is the uh, Down syndrome. We can also see some trisomy 18 and trisomy 13. So just uh, extra sets of chromosomes in that, in that chromosome. And uh, the, um, the process leading to the aneuploidy is the process called the uh, uh, miles mitotic, basically it's meiosis, uh, non-disjunction process. That is a process to produce this aneuploid. So that's that. So let's move on to the next one that is the chromosome aberration. So with this one, we uh, not only see in addition to seeing the number of chromosome variation, we also see the structure of the chromosome variation. And uh, these structural variation can be seen in one of these four variation, including the deletion, duplication, inversion, translocation. So here's from textbook that you can see say this is normal 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, R, F, N. And then deletion is D, E, F are deleted. So we are shortening just part of it. It is deleted. Duplication, you have D, F, D, F, for example. Or you have inverted sequence. So for example, what's that? D, F again. So it's inversed. So basically cut, but uh, put it back by an inverse way. So there are several one, several type of the aberration. And the one uh, most commonly talked about is called the translocation. So why is that translocation? Translocation it can be into the deletion and uh, the duplication. So let's look at the translocation. So here is the translocation. Uh, translocation is basically is one part of the chromosome move to the other part of the chromosome. And this move can be classified into two major types of the translocation. One is called the reciprocal translocation, meaning that say we have a chromosome one and chromosome 10. One piece of that chromosome are switched. So it's reciprocal translocation. The other one is called the Robertsonian, Robertsonian translocation. So for the Robertsonian translocation is that Robertsonian translocation usually occur in the acrocentric chromosome that the p-arm is very short. And so there will be transaction, transaction on the, at the central mirror. So we have the Q-arm, the large arm, and the other centrometric, uh, sorry, acrocentric chromosome, that's a large arm. So when the P-arm are cut, these two connect with each other. So basically with this translocation, we lose some gene from the P arm of the acrocentric chromosome. It usually is okay. The reason we see it is because that it doesn't really cause too much harm, meaning that the body still function okay or normally. It's because that this acrocentric chromosome, when we talk about that, we know that there's a 13, 14, 15, 20, 21, right? And uh, or 21, 22. Double check. Yeah, 21, 22. 13, 14, 15, 21, 22. So with this acrocentric chromosome, these P arm uh, basically are uh, heterochromatin, meaning that they are highly packed. And then you we know that all these P arm from 13, 14, 15, 21, 22 basically has the same gene. Those are the gene to produce, uh, to synthesize ribosome. So if we lose two, we still have the other four, three to produce the ribosome. So the cell still can function okay. So that's, that's that. So that's the Robertsonian uh, translocation. So let's look at the first one first. So where is that? That's this one here. So these is the uh, two type of chromosome. When we have the translocation, if it's reciprocal, sorry, reciprocal translocation, that two genes translocate, switch from one chromosome to the other chromosome, we basically preserve those genes, even though the location are different. So we start one, we call this, it's a balanced, balanced uh, translocation. If we translocate it and we lose gene, uh, very much like a Robertsonian translocation that we lose the P arm, even though that P arm is not that critical. In that sense, we call it uh, unbalanced uh, translocation. So we have the balance versus unbalanced translocation. This translation is the translocation of two chromosomes from non-homologous, right? If you translocate from 
say homologous one like chromosome one and chromosome one you switch you basically keep the same right because those two are the same chromosome one those homologous so what make it different is that it you translocate from chromosome one to say chromosome two right and so that switch would be significant to be meaningful basically so let's first look at the reciprocal translocation. So what we basically learned is that with this one, most of the time it's a balanced one. So the cell still produce functional, the chromosome will be varied, will be varied, right? Varied, there will be variation. And uh, uh, so that sounds okay, right? Not that clinical significant, but it will, it will become clinical significant when these carrier produce is uh, gametes, then that variation will become significant, significant, clinical significant. So let's look at what, what does it mean. So here is a uh, normal one, say this, see you have chromosome, say blue, chromosome red, or chromosome one and chromosome two. Their lengths are different. They are two different chromosomes. Each chromosome has homologous chromosome. So you have one copy from mom, one copy from dad, one copy from mom, one copy from dad. If you switch from here and here, basically it doesn't really make that difference, right? Because it will be very much the same. But if you switch these with these, you switch the piece of the chromosome between two different chromosome, not homologous chromosome, non-homologous chromosome. If you switch the chromosome between non-homologous chromosome, then you will make difference. And so that is the result of a reciprocal translocation. translocation. So you have chromosome one, but the homologous one becomes shorter because one of the piece is from the chromosome two. Now you have chromosome two, but the other one, the homologous one is longer because it got a piece from the chromosome one. So you see that. If this is a cell, if in this cell, basically it's a balanced because it still contains the gene A, B, C, D, E, K, L, M, N. Here you still have A, B, C, D, E, K, L, M, N. So you still have all the gene that you need to perform cell function. However, after, however, if these is the stem cell to produce the gametes, the consequence will be, will be important because now each of these chromosome will be divided into a gamete. And, uh, and then we will lead into a unbiased, sorry, unbalanced gametes. Unbalanced gametes. So let's see what, why does it lead into the unbalanced gametes. So here we have the uh, reciprocal uh, uh, translocation that we have blue chromosome, sorry, purple chromosome and the yellow chromosome. These two are switched. This one is supposed to be here. This purple one is supposed to be here, but there is translocation, reciprocal translocation. So we have these and this one will produce its gametes. And so basically one of these chromosomes will split into four. So this is from one cell, it will divide two, two be like four. Each one will carry one of these chromosomes. So say this one will split into here, this one split into here, this one will be put in here. So that's this one here. And the, and the, and sorry, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here. So you can, 
you can lead to the egg. That is, that is, uh, that is one of these chromosomes. And in this situation, that say you have a uh, Say if it ends up two of the chromosome, you can have the chance that you just got the share of the chromosome that's from the uh, from the normal chromosome, both purple and the yellow. This will be rebalanced. You may get a chance to to pair the chromosome from the translocated, like this one and uh, this one and so even though these are translocated but uh, but because of that translocation are reciprocal these will be still you still have all the gene you want you may end up to have one chromosome that is non-translocated one chromosome that is translocated then in this in this condition you have extra sets of this purple one or you may have the extra sets of this blue one, uh, yellow one so when we have the uh, replication we when we have the uh, uh, non-replication when we when they meet with the normal normal chromosome normal uh, gametes we may lead into either the balance or unbalanced, means that the chromosome, the cell have extra sets of the gene due to the reciprocal translocation from their stem cells, in their stem cells. So even though the stem cell, the host or carrier has balanced gene, meaning that all the gene they need, even though there's translocation. The gametes may end up to have unbalanced gene, unbalanced chromosome, either extra excessive, excessive chromosome or excessive gene or uh, a lack of some gene. Another, another translocation is called the Robertsonian translocation. That is the fuse. That is a fuse of two large arms to fuse together. And this happens on the uh, acrocentric chromosome. So these, these acrocentric chromosome has short, has a very short PR. And so if it's cut, this short one will get lost and then these two large one will merge together you still have those important gene that's either from 13 14 15 21 22 you still have those important gene at the large arm the short arm are the one that's used to uh, produce the ribosome so you lose two that's that's still okay because you still have the other three with this, this translocation, you reduce the amount of the chromosome. So you basically will merge two together to become one. So your chromosome number will change from 46 to 45. So that's that. So you learn, we learn these two types of the translocation. Reciprocal translocation, that two pieces switch with, from each other, between each other, and the uh, Robertsonian translocation is the uh, two large arm from the acrocentric chromosome merge to each other. And with Robertsonian chromosome, we reduce the chromosome number from 46 to 40, 45. So this is usually unbalanced, but not, but harmless. However, even though it's harmless, it's gametes could be harmless, could be harmful. So it's very similar like what we have discussed in the reciprocal chromosome that this balance is built based on that 
if you don't split them, split, if you don't split the cell, even though it's translocated, but you still have all the gene in the same cell. However, because their presentation is not present as pairs, right? Two homologous chromosome, two homologous chromosome, and you split them, they carry the gene you want, every gene you need. It become, um, it's not equal between homologous chromosome. So when the stem cell produce the gametes after the meiosis, the defects will be present. So let's look at what is the consequence or the defects in the gametes of a balanced Robertsonian translocation or harmless Robertsonian translocation carrier. So that's this one here. So say these two married, uh, this is a male, this square means a male, this circle means a female. This female has a translocation, the receipt, uh, sorry, the, uh, the uh, Robertsonian translocation that here is, this is chromosome 21. If you look at the uh, karyotype that you will see, oh, wait a minute. You're supposed to have 221, but you only have one chromosome 21. So that's this one here. However, you may also see that this chromosome 13 become longer. This one's supposed to have short P arm, but it's longer. So, so this indicates that it actually has a, a reduction of the chromosome from the 46 chromosome to 45 chromosome. And, uh, but it has all the gene you need. It has this uh, 221 chromosome. So that's that. Even though one is merged with the, the other one. So, so this is balanced. But then you, 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 the, the gametes from this one will be, will be one of these situations that has a normal 31, abnormal or the fusion of 31 and 21, or normal 21 or non 21. So one of its gametes or this one is a female, one of its all size will be one of that condition. No more 14, no more 31. Uh, combined with a no more 21 or a abnormal 13 and a no more 21 or abnormal 13 or the non 21, right? So, and uh, the sperm from this male is normal. So it, have, it will have either, it will always have normal 13 and normal 21. So you will end up to have, let me see if I can have a pencil here, pencil here, this does pencil. Can I do this one here? I hope. So say these will go produce this uh, in these uh, gametes mixed with, say, oops, it's only having once. All right, yes. So that's that one, very transient. Yeah, so, so that's good, that's good. So that's this one here and uh, this one here, right? Or this one here. Yeah, I think that this one here and this one here mixed with this one here and uh, this one here. So the right side is from the, um, uh, the female, the left side is from the male, okay? So and here we have this one here and this one here. So left side from the 
and uh, here is the this one here and this one here so these mail will contribute to contribute 113 and 121 these female will contribute 113 with the normal one abnormal one and the 121 and uh, this will be contribute 113 one twenty one and uh, the male will contribute one thirteen one twenty one right so each one contributes a set right each one contributes a set and this one will be uh female contributes one thirteen one twenty one and the, the male contribute one thirteen one twenty one so each each gametes contribute a set of that chromosome but there will be chance that you will end up like this 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 in this it will be normal you still have a it that's very fortunate that you you have you luckily got the normal 13 from the mom normal 13 from the dad you got normal 21 from the mom normal 21 from dad However, you may end up to have a baby or zygote that has a normal 20, normal 13 from the mom, but abnormal 13, sorry, normal 13 from the dad, abnormal 13 from the mom, and the normal 21 from the dad, and, ab, and normal 21 from the mom. Or you may have like this, no more 13 from the mom from the dead of uh, no more 13 from the mom and uh, no more 21 from the dead non 21 from the mom or you may end up like this no more 13 from the dead of uh, no more 13 from the mom no more 13 from the no more 21 from the dead and the normal 21 from the mom. So you can have one of these situations. And, uh, and you will see that in this, this is structurally normal and the, the gene are balanced. You may also have things like this, structurally abnormal. So this is basically a, a trans, uh, uh, Robsonian translocation. However, you still have a balanced gene or harmless gene. You still have all the gene you want. You have uh, basically 221 and uh, 213. But you may also end up to have 50% or somewhere around 50% that you have the 2. 21 with one extra set of 21 that fuse with 13 or things like this. 221 with one extra set of 21 fuse with 13. These 21 will do it gene expression. So, so it will be very much like you have 321, even though if you do the carrier type, you only see 221. And then this one basically will show the symptom like a uh, trisomy that we talked earlier that it has 321. And then this third 21, this third 21 is not because of the extra 21, it's because of fuse between 13 and 21. But the symptom will be the same because you basically has the extra gene from 21. So this is the down syndrome, not due to the trisomy, but because of the uh, the uh, Robsonia translocation. So that's that. All right. I hope that I explained it. So this is um, like a, a it's still a appear as a Down syndrome, but it's not due to the, due to the, um, the trisomy, but it's due to the translocation. So a quick question would be that what kind of translocation will 
lead to the Down syndrome. Answer would be the Robertsonian translocation. And the Robertsonian translocation associated with the chromosome 21. So for example, like this one here, you see that 21, 21, even though you only have two 21, you have 46 chromosomes. However, you are 13. It's longer, and the, that longer part is because of the the uh, the translocation or the fusion with an extra set of the twenty one. That's that. Oh yeah, so that's it. Yeah, hope that explains it. So very quick summary of what we learned with this lecture. We learned about chromosome variation. There are two ways to see that variation. One is the number difference. You can either have a annual proidy that you have either one more chromosome or one less chromosome. Trisomy X0 or the XXY, uh, those are the um, annual proidy. So that's number of the chromosome is is varied it's different you may also have the structure change at the chromosome so we can have the deletion duplication inversion and the translocation we focus on the translocation because a translocation can lead to the deletion and the duplication in this case we basically duplicate the 21 gene in the 21 gene in the 21 genes in the 21 in the translocation, we talk about two types of translocation. One is called the reciprocal translocation that two piece of the chromosome switch. So the cell still have balanced, balanced gene, every gene you need. And uh, the person may develop normal, normal, normally, but the gametes may lead into the deficit because even though the translocation switch the gene cells still have all the gene you want, but if you divide that cell into the gametes, then you may, in some case, you may lose that balance because that balance is built based on the combination of gene that's needed to be in the same cell. If you split them, you, you break that balance, break that, um, that, uh, uh, that, that support from, from two different genes. Same thing applied to the uh, Robertsonian translocation. And uh, this we learned about a type of the consequence that is the translocation, translocation down syndrome. That is a fusion of uh, extra cells 21 into another acrocentric chromosome. So that's that. Hope that helps.